Good afternoon, everyone. We're looking forward to getting started with our webinar in just a few moments. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, Support Your Client's Job Search as part of our What Works webinar series. We've been having so much fun with this webinar series and we're so thankful that you're able to join us for this one today. My name is Michelle Carr and I'm joined today by my colleague, Tash Lintesky, and we will be your hosts for our webinar over this lunchtime period. We want to start off by first of all thanking you for your patience. Um, I know that we did have some complications with the scheduling of the date for this webinar so thank you for those who are still able to join us on this new date and we'll certainly make sure that a recording is available for those um, who were not able to join due to the change in date. I also wanted to make note that this webinar is only one hour in length um, I opened up the webinar screen earlier and it said that we had a three hour webinar, which is certainly not the case. We will not be here for three hours. Um, so I apologize for any confusion that may have been caused as a result of that. We are here today to help further equip you for the important process of helping your clients search for a job. In a world of ever changing and growing careers, this can certainly be an exciting task. That said, we understand that a job search can be overwhelming. Knowing this, we have created resources that we hope can be of benefit to you and your cl clients while they're looking for a new job or looking to see what opportunities and supports are available in our community. Through our time with you today, we are hoping to talk about local promising sectors and industry trends. So what are the in-demand jobs? We'll go over some of our resources that we think can be helpful for you when you're working with your clients. And that includes We Jobs, We Search, your job search in WeMap. We'll also take a look at the basics of labor market information. So what is labor market information? Um, how does wages relate to that? What types of information do we have for labor market information in our local community? We do have a lot of information to cover in this hour, so we're going to try to keep things moving at a good pace. And that said, if you do have any questions at any time, please feel free to use the question discussion box that's in the side panel on the right hand side of your screen. If you have colleagues or staff who would benefit from this webinar, know that we will be posting a recording of the webinar on our website, so it will be available for view in the future. We may reference handouts throughout the webinar as well, and these are available for download in the side panel shown in your screen um, under the handouts section. Now, our hope is that some of you are able to have a room full of people enjoying a good meal during this lunch hour um, as you're taking part in this webinar. So if you do have a group of people who are watching the webinar, then we would really appreciate if you could send one of us a quick email um, at the end of our webinar time just to let us know. Uh, we are keeping track of numbers as far as webinar views and so we would love to know who's been able to take part in this session. So without further ado, let's jump into today's webinar. So to start off, you may or may not be familiar with who Workforce Windsor Essex is and what we do. So Workforce Windsor Essex serves the Windsor Essex region as the Local Employment Planning Council. Our mandate is to plan, facilitate, and advocate for regional workforce development. Essentially what this means is that we collect information on trends in the labor market and share our findings and resources to help employers, job seekers, educators, and community organizations be more aware of what's happening and in turn be more successful. 
Oftentimes, we're approached with inquiries related to in-demand jobs. So what are those promising sectors and what industries are currently hiring? So this is a list that we return to each year to make sure that it's as up-to-date and reflective of our community as possible. As you can see from the slide on your screen, the current promising sectors list includes construction, professional scientific and technical services, healthcare and social assistance, manufacturing, repair and maintenance, and education. Now we're going to take a couple of moments to go through each of these sectors. We don't, won't go through too much detail because in some ways we know that we're preaching to the choir and you probably know a lot of this already, but we do have some tidbits of information that may be helpful to you as you're thinking about how you can use this information with your clients. So the first sector we'll look at is construction. So as you may know, we have a few large construction projects coming our way, including the Gordie Howe International Bridge and the Mega Hospital, and eventually a high-speed rail line. For the first project, the bridge, there will be specific roles required, such as iron workers and heavy equipment operators, as well as numerous additional roles that will be required for the full infrastructure needs, such as carpenters for building toll booths or plumbers and HVAC workers to complete the customs offices. So right now there are almost 8,000 people working in construction with that number expected to grow greatly once these projects are started. Um, it's also important to keep in mind that those who work on the bridge project will likely have the skills experience uh, needed to work on the mega hospital as well. So it's sort of a straight shot from one project to the next that they um, can possibly take part in. Um, so right now is a good time to act enter this sector because of this consistent work that is expected. So the top five occupations that are expecting growth in the next few years are construction trades laborers, heavy equipment operators, electricians, carpenters, and iron workers. Um, so if you or your client are interested in learning more about this sector, um, we advise that you take a look at our Help Bridger City resources, um, which are also in your handouts. Um, these will provide an overview of the occupations that are uh, likely needed for the Gordie Howe International Bridge, as well as the skills that are needed for each of the um, construction positions and where you can access local training programs. The next sector that we'll take a look at is professional scientific and technical services. Now, a large part of this sector is the technology industry, which can involve anything from mobile app development to software development to social media or graphic design. It seems as though there aren't too many um, jobs today that technology doesn't play some role in. Now, this is an ever-changing sector with new jobs, such as a social media writer, popping up all the time. We have a number of larger and smaller firms involved in our region, and many community members are employed across the border as well. In fact, we have over 6,000 people from our community that commute to the states to work each day, which is something that's very unique um, for that cross-border um, relationship, and technology is certain one of, certainly one of the larger sectors that is represented within um, those 6,000 people who are commuting each day. It's important to keep in mind that though tech workers don't just work in the technology work industry, they do work in all sectors. Every other industry uses tech devices, such as electronic cash registers in stores and restaurants, automated equipment on auto assembly lines, or robots in the operating room. While tech workers may not be the person operating each of these machines, they may be the one responsible for designing the machine or providing maintenance if necessary. Now, this sector does not only include tech workers, it also includes jobs like engineers, lawyers, and architects. So as you can see, there's just over 4,000 people working in the sector in our community and the top five occupations expecting growth include mechanical engineers, information systems analysts, biological engineers, paralegals, and then computer programmers and interactive media developers. Now if you have a client that is interested in the sector or if you are looking to learn more about the sector then we would encourage you to check out our Windsor Essex tech sector section um, which can be found on our website. Um, here you'll find our soon to be released tech report. So that is coming our way in the next month or so. There's also information on networking opportunities. There's some really fantastic videos of local companies that will help to give your clients an understanding of what skills and training employers are looking for in the sector and some of the work that's being done locally. And then there's also information on how individuals can go about learning more about tech and how to get into the tech industry. So next we'll look at healthcare and social assistance. So this sector is currently experiencing what is known as a silver tsunami. 
So this has us witnessing an increase in retirements in certain occupations um, in the health field, as well as an increased demand for healthcare services. So when most people think of the sector, they think of doctors and nurses. However, there are many behind the scenes jobs that are involved in this sector as well, including maintenance, counseling, and culinary positions. So with the increase in needed support for our aging population and those requiring mental health services, the need for support workers such as social workers, counselors, and home care providers is increasing as well. So right now there are over 20,000 people in Windsor, Essex um, working in the sector and with the silver tsunami we're definitely going to see an increase in this um, number as well. Um, so uh, occupations expecting growth right now are registered nurses, nurse aides, food counter attendants and kitchen helpers, social and community service workers, and nursing coordinators and supervisors. The next industry that we'll take a look at is manufacturing. And as you can see from the number of jobs in our community in this sector, which is over 30,000, um, this is certainly a large sector for our region. Now, people often feel as though manufacturing is dark, dirty, and dangerous, making it an unappealing sector to work in. Although that may have been the case decades ago, technological advancements have made these facilities much safer, cleaner, and more innovative places to work. With the implementation of robotics and automation into their processes, a whole new set of jobs have opened up in the sector with new jobs being created all the time. It's important to keep in mind that while the auto industry plays the largest role in the sector, there are also facilities that are producing food products, pharmaceutical materials, and furniture. As you can see, the top five occupations expecting growth include laborers in metal fabrication, machining tool operators, industrial engineering and manufacturing technologists and technicians, plastic products assemblers, finishers and inspectors, and metal products machine operators. So we live in a car-driven area, which is exemplified by the large manufacturing industry we just talked about. So there will always be a need for repairs, particularly a high demand for truck and trailer repair, and that's where the sector of repair and maintenance comes into play. So while most mechanics specialize in small automobiles, there's a huge need for those that are trained and certified to work with large tractor trailers and heavy equipment, um, such as farm tractors. So without these mechanics, the transportation and agriculture industries can suffer simply due to a lack of working equipment, um, as well as specialized cleaners are need needed as well. Um, so if you think about the inside of your car, imagine the inside of a tractor trailer um, and all the different materials that they're carrying. So whether that's food, seeds, even hazardous materials and going back and forth across the border. So these trailers need to be cleaned before carrying anything new. So right now there are over 2000 people working in this sector um, with expected growth for welders, auto service technicians, truck and bus mechanics, uh, specialized cleaners, laborers in metal fabrication, and contractors and supervisors of mechanic trades. Now, the last sector that we'll touch on is education. Now, this is one that has come onto the promising sectors list and has come off of it several times over the last few years. And it's one that may come as a surprise. Retirements in this sector and an increase in our population due to immigration is driving up enrollment at our local school boards. Uh, so locally, we do have four school boards and then we do have three post-secondary educational institutions as well. Uh, French speaking staff also continues to be a big demand in the sector. Actually, we just heard something um, about this the other day, how much of a demand this really is. It's important to keep in mind that the sector is not just made up of teachers, but just like as we heard in healthcare, there are many people who are working behind the scenes, including maintenance and janitorial staff, teaching assistants and support workers. So as you can see from the list there, the top five occupations expecting growth include elementary and secondary school teacher assistants, post-secondary teaching and research assistants, secondary and elementary school teachers and educational counselors, janitors, caretakers, and building superintendents, and then elementary school and kindergarten teachers. Um, I believe there has been a decline additionally in the number of people who are starting to pursue um, education as a career path just due to the increase of um, the two-year um, teaching certificate. And so that is something that certainly will impact the sector as well. So now that we've given you sort of a broader um, look at what sectors are in demand and some of those occupations. We're gonna show you now one of our new projects. 
um, that's called in-demand jobs. So this looks at the top, um, right now it's about 78 in-demand jobs um, in Windsor, Essex. So if you go to our website, workforcewindsoressex.com, and you go to our top jobs, in-demand jobs page. Actually, while you're on that point, Tashlin, one of the handouts that we have provided does have a list of all the links that we're referring to in today's webinar. So all of those links will be in one handy spot for you. So on this web page, if you um, scroll through, you'll see some additional pieces to this project. Um, but then you'll see this massive list of links. So basically, there is a career profile on here um, for every job that's on this list. So it has, um, actually, we'll open one up for you guys. So food service supervisor. Very appropriate for lunchtime. <laughs> yes. um, so you'll see here there is a job description um, as well as the median salary and wage that's found locally. Um, skills mostly, most commonly listed in job postings. Um, job duties, working conditions, and uh, the possible career pathways with sort of the static image um, of a potential pathway of someone that wanted to go into this role. Um, as well as any local education and training uh, programs that are available. Um, so um, anything that's associated to this often at different levels. So some of them are certificate programs, some are diploma, degree, anything um, that is available within that. Um, so right now in these career profiles, you see sort of the static image. Um, but we have recently expanded on this project and created um, what we call We Explore. So on your screen right now, you might be a little overwhelmed by seeing this huge kind of cluster of bubbles. Um, but this is our We Explore tool. So on here, um, you can do the same thing, going through um, different sectors. Um, and here you can see um, for the tourism and hospitality sector. So if you find um, food service supervisor here, um, you'll see um, just with the highlighted colors, um, all of the jobs that go into that um, and possibly go out of it. So you can see that being a cook, a bartender, a food counter attendant, um, all gives you experience to work as a food uh, service supervisor. And then from a food service supervisor, you can go into restaurant manager and then that leads into restaurant owner. Um, just sort of following that pathway. And then if you click on the food service supervisor bubble there, um, you'll see um, that similar job description, wages and salaries and skills are posted as well. And if this was your starting page for looking at this job, you can um, click here and it'll open that career profile um, that we just showed. In addition, um, if any of your clients are looking on here and they think this is the job I want, I wanna apply right now, um, they can see that there's 23 active job postings for this position right now with a direct link to all of them. Um, so those job postings are updated uh, on a daily basis. Um, so all of that is there. Additionally, they can search. Um, oh yeah, so you'll see this little um, blue number there. Um, and that tells you the number of active job postings. So um, like we said, there was 23 here. That's what that number there is. You can also um, size the bubbles by their median salary or um, number of job postings. So the bigger the bubble, the more postings or um, larger the salary is. Um, it's also available in French. Um, and again, you can search any of the jobs that are in here, um, as well as go through all of the sectors. <laughs> um, so something else with our in-demand jobs. Um, so if they found, I wanna be a, a food service supervisor, I'm gonna start as a cook, um, but they don't really, maybe your client doesn't really know anything about being a cook. We have done uh, workforce profiles, which will be these red links next to any of the um, jobs we've done them for. And it's essentially a blog post about um, someone who's working in that role currently. So this is about a cook. So you'll see here um, what an average day looks like for um, a cook at a restaurant. What got the person into that field? Um, what education they've looked at? Um, any advice they have for someone starting out um, in this role? 
um, and any long-term possibilities that they see for themselves, especially in Windsor. That looks really yummy. I feel like we should be going to Reno's right now. <laughs> um, so all of that information um, can be found, all of those links on our in-demand jobs page um, for any of those resources. Great. So the next tool that we'll discuss is We Jobs, and this is something that you may be familiar with. Um, emails I, in previous years have gone out under Darlene's job postings, and Darlene is certainly the one who is behind all of this. And some of you, there's a good chance you will know Darlene, um, but it is now phrased as We Jobs. So if you have clients that find themselves overwhelmed by all the different job hosting side, sites out there, or if you're looking for a job for a client, we do have this service available. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a service provider mentioned to me that they didn't realize that clients could also sign up to be part of this list. So this is something that is very much open to service providers, clients, anyone in the community um, who would like to have access to this list. I believe there's currently over 1,500 people who are signed up to receive these emails on uh, a fairly regular basis. Uh, Darlene does try to get these emails out um, two to three times a week, depending on what's going on and how many jobs in are out there. As you know, um, our WeSkills department does search through many local employer websites and job search engines to provide local residents with this up-to-date and accurate information. And it does also include information on job fairs and short-term training opportunities as well. So if this is something that you haven't signed up for yet, then we'll just give you a brief overview of how you can do that. You would go to our website, workforcewindsoressex.com slash wejobs, and then you would just put your information in to join the mailing list there. So your first name and last name are fine, but there is the option there to provide your job title and organization. Obviously, you will need to provide your email address, and then the um, list that you are looking for specifically related to WeJobs is the job postings in job fairs. That said, if you do want project updates, new releases, and monthly labor market information, you could sign up for those at the same time as well and get them all in in one shot there. So once you are signed up, you will start receiving those emails. And receiving these emails can save you time when you are looking for opportunities with your clients. If you want a quick look at what's available in Windsor Essex, or if you are wanting your clients to perhaps develop those skills of looking for job postings, knowing how to navigate them. If you haven't seen a WeJobs email before, we do have a sample of one up on the screen. Um, oftentimes people tell us that no one is hiring in Windsor Essex, so we often tell them to sign up for the WeJobs list because we all get these in, a, in our inboxes and we're always amazed at the large number of job postings. So as you can see, we're looking at the jobs summary right now. So the um, name of the job is what is bolded and then next to that is the name of the company that is hiring for that position. And this is an 83 page document, which is just crazy. That's a lot of job information. Um, and then as you scroll down, you'll have access to more specific information on that job posting. So um, this information is whatever the employer provides Darlene with. And so um, it does have, in some cases, a description. It might go into a further detail. Uh, there will be contact information, location. There'll also be a link for if of your client is interested in looking at this job further and that will bring you um, directly to where information on that posting can be found so that that client can then um, go about applying to that job. Now, if your client is unsure of what other services are available to them, they may benefit from using our research tool, and that should be up on your screen. Uh, so this is a wayfinding tool that provides a path to services or resources that your clients may be looking for based on their needs. So when you start on the main page of research, you'll select the type of information that you are looking for. So let's take a look. So the first question is tell us about the kind of help that you're looking for. So if this is perhaps one of your clients who's looking for a new job, uh, we would select that option. The next question asks if the client is currently working. So for the purposes of this example, we'll say that the client is unemployed. The client does have the option of learning about employment insurance or Ontario Works, but for right now we'll skip that information. Then there's also the option to have online help or in-person help. Um, so in-person help would probably involve a client 
going to most of your uh, organizations. So we could select that in-person help option. And then there's the option of making that list smaller by having the client um, indicate more about themselves. So perhaps they fall under one of these categories. For this example, let's say that the client is none of the above. And then there's the option, uh, we can go to both of these, we'll see best of both worlds. So we can go to the Employment Ontario service providers, which some of you I believe would fall under. And so if the client were to click on one of those, they would have access to information on your location, um, a description of your organization, et cetera. We'll just take the first one that's on the list there in alphabetical order. So there's the logo information, a website, email address, and then a map as well. Now the key is not to press the back button when you're in WeSearch. I make this mistake on a frequent basis. Um, you'll wanna just go um, up to the qualifiers there at the top. And then we could also um, select the private employment agencies. And so from the perspective of a service provider, which I believe most of you are, if you know of an organization or additional services or resources that could be added to this list, please send us an email and let us know. We are looking to keep this as up to date as possible. And we know that there are so many great resources and organizations um, in our community. So we would certainly love to make sure that they are included as part of this um, tool so that your clients can have the best access to resources as possible. Great, all right, so next we're going to take a look at, at your job search. So we know that there are many different barriers that individuals may face when they are searching for employment. And this could include a lack of transportation, limited access to childcare, or a lack of Canadian work experience. If there's a chance that uh, you have clients who have these um, barriers on a daily basis. So if your client is looking for some further tips to help them overcome these barriers, um, then they might find it helpful to check out your job search. So this guide highlights various ways to overcome different barriers. Now in the guide, there are specific tips for recent post-secondary graduates, persons who are on Ontario Works, those who are underemployed and newcomers. So as we scroll through here, you can see that um, there are success stories from individuals who have accessed local career services. So thank you to all of you who provided us with those. Um, there's information for newcomers to Canada. Again, there's people receiving Ontario Works, recent post-secondary graduates, those who are underemployed, and then there's also information on labor market information. Labor market information can sometimes seem like this big phrase that we use all the time, but what does it really mean and how do we put it into practice? And how do we use it meaningfully in our search for employment? So this kind of helps to break it down for readers so that they can de develop that understanding as to what it is and how they can easily access it and make use of it. Additionally, we have a job fair guide. Um, this is something um, that we try to create as part of this PDF, um, it can be printed as a one page document or resource that you can share with your clients. And you'll notice that we did create it in a way that has check boxes so that your clients can go through. And this was created because we noticed that there was a lot of job fairs happening in the region and we really wanted to make sure that clients um, knew how to approach these in a meaningful way. So there's information on things that should be done before the job fair. Uh, things that could be done on to the on the way to the job fair because I know that I've heard stories of people who have some type of situation happen on their way to the job fair and end up having an interview with someone who perhaps they had a bad run-in with on the road or something like that. Information for what you should be doing at the job fair and then also those follow-up steps that are important for after the job fair. So some of the different tips that are included within this document include um, knowing how to talk about gaps on resume in positive ways. So perhaps you have a client who stayed home to take care of a child. We know that um, raising a child is certainly, you gain many different skills. And so perhaps they were able to um, work on their planning skills or their patience or um, learning how to try things in many different ways. Um, there's also information on um, the importance of volunteering or job shadowing with someone in a job that your client would like to do. And we know that that is certainly a huge step in better understanding local workplace culture. Uh, 
there's also information on looking to upgrade computer skills. As we talked about before, technology is part of so many different jobs. And so if someone is planning to work in an office environment or an environment where technology would be part of that, um, certainly having that level of familiar, familiarity with computer skills will be important. Um, there are also, um, yes, tips on how to use that labor market information, which we already touched on. Great, all right, I'll pass it back on over to Tash Lynn. Um, so an additional resource um, that could benefit you um, and your clients um, is one that we've called WeMap. Um, so if your client has maybe decided what they want to do as a job or if they're still kind of unsure, they can use this map to sort of see where the jobs are located. Um, so this is obviously a map of Windsor, Essex. And you can see these huge um, circles as well as some smaller ones. So each of these circles um, right now represents, should I make this bigger? If that helps. Um, represents um, an employer um, that is looking, has posted a job in a specific um, postal code. So if you click on this very large one here, um, you'll see that it's for the postal code N8N2L9, which I believe is out near sort of Patilla Road area. Um, and then you can see every color on the circle represents a different employer that has posted a job. So you can see here six of the 43 postings in this postal code. Um, so 14% were from Sintas, um, or there was one posting for classic bingo. So you can look sort of through there. Um, you can also see um, within that postal code um, which occupations um, are being posted for, um, as well as what the education level is um, of those postings and when they were posted. Um, so that sort of just gives you a, um, a wider view of exactly where um, the jobs are being posted. Um, if you have a client that is um, heavily reliant on public transportation, this tool is also great because you can have it display um, local bus routes um, sort of overlaid with these job postings. So these are all of the um, bus routes. So you can see that um, some routes don't make it um, to certain locations, but the majority of the ones in the city of Windsor um, do um, have access to this based on a bus route. And if you have a client um, that maybe lives on a specific bus route or they um, just have access to one specifically, so for instance, the Central 3 line, um, you can have it um, display just that one and see um, what opportunities are closest to them um, if they are just choosing to take that one route, if that's what their option is. Um, so it's just a great tool to see um, where opportunities are and whether um, your clients possibly have access to them through public transportation and just seeing what employers are posting um, in which areas. All right, now that we've gone through some of those tools, we're going to take a look at labor market information. As you may know, labor market information is any information that is related to workforce trends, occupations, and career exploration. Essentially, everything in this webinar touches on some piece of labor market information. Um, this may include average wages of local jobs, news articles of businesses opening, statistics on the employment or unemployment rates, and much more. While some of this information may seem unnecessary when helping your clients search for jobs, it can actually be very useful. So some examples of that, um, knowing the average wage of a job when a client is interviewing um, for a position will help to ensure that they are receiving a competitive wage. Knowing about new businesses opening may give a client a head start on which businesses to approach when looking for new opportunities. Uh, that way they can apply for a position or work to meet with the owners before it opens so that they can start their job right when that new location opens. And knowing the current unemployment rate will let you and your clients know how many other people in the region are looking for work. While this number may be discouraging if the unemployment rate is high, which means more competition for jobs, it can also help to make sure that they are aware of the level of competition and start thinking about more unique ways to approach employers so that they can stand out from other candidates. 
Being aware of labor market information helps to make you more aware of what is happening in the region and helps you better prepare clients for their job search. So on our website, we do have a local labor market information hub. So going to this part of our website will help you to view um, different reports such as the labor force survey results, educational attainment in the region, and migration trends. And if you don't see what you're looking for, you can always submit a custom data request by clicking on the right side panel. So as you can see, there we go. Yes, if you can't find the labor market data that you need, you can click there and it'll ask you to fill out a few questions and our um, data team over here will be able to work on providing that information for you. So Tesh Lin is going to walk us through what a few of these reports uh, look like and how they can be used in the work that you do. Um, so some of the recent reports that we've created um, look at educational attainment, apprenticeship trends, drum demographics um, and migration trends. So a lot of this is based on the new census releases um, and some of it is just based on local uh, monthly data that we are able to get a hold of. Um, so one of the monthly reports that we, we create is called um, the job demand report. So any of the reports that have sort of this large blue button um, are available in a more interactive um, view in this page. Um, so in this report, um, we look at um, trends of job postings for the last month. Um, so you can see um, the most commonly posted for job was for a transport truck driver. It was posted 191 times um, and the salary most commonly associated with it was $41,200. Um, so we have sort of that top 10 list here. Um, as well, you can see sort of trends in um, the amount of jobs that are being posted. Um, so since December, we've definitely been on the upswing for that. Um, a lot of this, you can see some seasonal trends, different things like that, but it's kind of great to see that last um, six month overview. You can also see um, the top five employers that posted the most opportunities. Um, so a lot of these are larger businesses such as Squishabang, Loblaws, Shoppers, um, but there's um, specifically local ones such as the Windsor Regional Hospital, um, which are great to see up there, lots of opportunities. Um, you can also see um, the number of postings based on municipalities. So the majority, 73%, were in Windsor, but there um, is still a breakdown of any of those other municipalities out in Essex County. Um, a great piece of this is um, the overview of technical and soft skills that are most commonly posted for. So this is great um, if your clients are looking to get into a specific position and they're wondering what skills they need. So for every position, um, there's a heavy focus on soft skills. So on here, you can see that the most common skills are oral and written communication, um, being detail oriented, a team player, integrity and customer service oriented. Um, so these skills, if you go back and look at past month's reports of this, um, these are sort of the steady top five that we always see. So that's great um, to express with your clients um, that this is exactly what employers are looking for. This are the skills they're expecting um, their candidates um, to have. Um, and then looking at the technical skills, you can see um, the most commonly is uh, Microsoft Office. So again, focus on those computer and technical skills. But then there's also skills like uh, reading blueprints, knowing freight software, driving a forklift, um, knowing preventative maintenance. Um, so those um, might be more job specific, um, specifically to construction or manufacturing or any warehouse kind of work. Um, but that shows that, that those kinds of jobs are posted for heavily and that's the one skill that employers are really looking for. Um, it also shows the job type. Um, so we can see that uh, over 80% of the jobs are full-time and over 90% of them are for permanent positions, which is great to see. Um, and the experience and education. So most um, jobs require um, a high school diploma um, and are only requiring less than two years experience. So that's great for any of your clients that are um, just looking to enter the workforce for the first time and uh, maybe straight out of high school or any of those people looking to um, do a career change um, into something they've never had experience for before. Um, another great uh, report is our quarterly surveys and bulletins. So opening up one of these, um, so these are surveys that are completed by local employers every quarter, so every three months. 
um, and we get a wide variety of responses from these employers. So you can see um, across um, all the municipalities, across many um, sectors. So it's great to see sort of the variety that we have locally. Um, looking at these bulletins is great because you can see what jobs um, employers are anticipating that they'll be hiring for. So for this um, time frame, which was um, our last quarter from October to December of 2017, they were anticipating hires of general laborers in both manufacturing and construction, electricians, accountants, machinists, personal support worker, and food and beverage server. So if that's, um, if any of those are positions that your clients are looking for, um, this is sort of solidifying that they um, will remain in demand or become in demand when your clients are looking for these opportunities. Um, as well, there's the most hired for positions, a lot of them kind of um, align as well as the hard to fill positions. So this is a great list if you find that you have clients that have experience in any of these positions. So maybe they've done welding before or have machinist experience. If they're looking to get into that field again, this just shows that employers are really um, looking for good candidates to fill those. They're getting a little um, desperate potentially depending on how uh, long they've been looking for these um, good candidates to fill these positions. So that's something great um, to know as well as you can see that um, the majority of employees, um, a lot of employers have hired in the last um, quarter, um, the majority of them for full-time positions. So one other tool um, that Michelle touched on a little bit is our labor force survey. So this is where you're gonna find information on um, the unemployment rate, the labor force, and the employment rate. Um, so as Michelle said before, looking at the unemployment rate can show you um, and your clients sort of what the competition for jobs is like uh, right now. So for March, the unemployment rate was 5.2%. Um, so 5% of the um, population that's in the labor force is looking for work. Um, that did um, increase slightly in the last month, but um, overall we've been sort of on a downward trend, which is great to see. Um, and for the labor force, it increased um, up to 174,000 people um, either working or looking for work. Um, so it's great to see as well. So another tool that you or your clients um, might find helpful when, <coughs> excuse me, looking for a job is our 2016 Windsor Essex wages. So this is a great tool to sort of get that realistic view of what employers are offering right now for local jobs. So perhaps you have a client that um, is looking to become a welder. They've possibly never done it before. You can search um, in this table and you'll see welder comes up and the median um, wage of what's most commonly posted for is about $22 an hour. So it's great to see um, as well. You can look at the 10th percentile. Um, so sort of the lower end and see that those may be possibly just starting their career in this field are getting $15 an hour. And looking at the 90th percentile, it can show you those that have a lot of experience, have worked in this field for a long time, are getting about $34 an hour. So it just gives you that you and your clients that realistic view of will this job support their lifestyle? And is this something that they um, can sustain their living on? Um, so another tool, we have a lot of tools today, um, <laughs> that is also helpful is our skills matrix. So this is a booklet. Um, you can find all of this stuff. Um, so everything we've shown you is available on our website in both English and French. Um, so this is a booklet um, on our website that sort of goes through um, what skills are needed for in-demand jobs. So it gives you a definition of foundational skills, soft skills, and technical skills. Um, as well as some examples of these skills. And then it goes into a matrix style. So on the left, you'll see um, different positions and these are categorized by their skill level. So um, this is for skill level A. So these are jobs that require a university education to enter the field. Um, so under the job title, you can see um, other possible um, job titles. Some of these can vary a lot. Um, typical years um, of experience needed and the median hourly wage. And then as you go sort of across the board, you'll see um, which skills, so starting with foundational skills, um, are needed to succeed in this role. So it starts with foundational, but then um, it's easier to sort of view if you have the booklet, um, but going across the line on what soft skills and technical skills. So as you can see by sort of the variety of the dots there, 
Um, this can vary a lot depending on what job um, you or your client is looking at. But there's two great ways to use this tool. So one is um, if your client knows what job they want, so say they want to be a construction manager, they can use this booklet to see what skills do I need to develop? Um, what skills do I need to work on? What do I need further training on? So perhaps they've um, never really done um, any sort of supervising or recruiting. Maybe that's something they want to look into, um, possible short-term training, upskilling, maybe getting a mentor to sort of help with that. Um, the other way is if somebody um, feels that they have all of these foundational skills, um, they have interpersonal and planning and leadership, um, any of those soft skills, as well as these required technical skills, they can sort of find all of that and see what job aligns with that. So maybe they have those skills, um, maybe they want to look into being a construction manager because they're um, already have the experience and the skills needed for that role. Um, so if they have that education level as well, um, that's sort of a benefit to see what's out there available for them um, to align with their interests or their experience. And now I'll pass back to Michelle. <laughs> Give you a bit of a breather there, Tash. <laughs> All right, um, if you are hoping to keep up to date on current, current events that are related to the local labor market, you can visit workforcewindsoressex.com slash LMI. I just have to get to it. Oh, we're gonna navigate to it behind the scenes way. There we go. Oh, excellent, sorry. So maybe, well, the slash LMI link yes, does work as works. well. Yeah. That's all right, I actually wanted to touch on WeNav, so this works out well. <laughs> so Tash Lynn works very hard at keeping this fairly up to date. So this has links to what is going on in the world of LMI in our region. So you'll find recent news articles that cover very various labor market issues, including the opening and closing of businesses, workforce trends, and new resources and services that can support local workers and job seekers. So being aware as to what is happening in the region will allow you to better serve uh, your clients. And perhaps this is an activity if you have a group of clients and you want them to develop that understanding as to what's happening in our region, this is a great activity where they can go on the site and check out some of these um, different articles that do relate to local labor market information. Uh, while we're on the WeNav page, we'll just briefly touch on WeNav. I'm sh I imagine many of you are familiar with WeNav, so we won't spend too much time on it, but it is our career counseling um, curriculum for youth. So this is something that, as you can see, has the six different sections. And all of those sections include a PowerPoint presentation, handout materials, um, tips for having a successful um, session, et cetera. Uh, these are modifiable resources. So let's say you have a group of adults who you're hoping could use something of this nature. You can go in and modify these Word documents so that it reflects the type of content and um, perhaps language level that those adults would have. Or if you have a group of newcomers to Canada and you would like something that's at a lower English level, then you can certainly go in and change uh, those words up as needed. There's also additional resources that are included as part of that. One of the other areas that we'll touch on is our experiential learning hub. So over this past year, and this has been something that Tashlin has been working incredibly hard on, um, we have really dove into the world of experiential learning. And we all know the importance of um, having that opportunity to connect that classroom learning with workplace experiences. And we know that um, for a lot of the times we do talk about experiential learning as it relates to students, but this can certainly apply for um, all job seekers. So we'll just bring to your attention a few different resources that uh, may be of interest for you to check out. Uh, we do have an educators toolkit for experiential learning. Um, so perhaps you are teaching a group of youth or a group of adults, um, then this will walk you through some ways that you can have those individuals take part in experiential learning. And that doesn't necessarily look like going out to complete a co-op placement, but perhaps that's bringing an employer in to speak with your group and to shed some light on uh, what their local company looks like. And so there are some great tips for how you can do that. Um, there's also different rubrics and um, kind of plans for things to keep in mind as you're um, going about pursuing that. Um, if you work closely with employers, then there is an employer's guide as well. So that is something that you may want to share with employers along the way as it just kind of shows them the spectral, sorry, the spectrum as to what 
um, experiential learning could look like for them. As sometimes employers, um, perhaps they just don't have the time or the capacity to take on um, someone for a um, lengthy amount of time, but they would love to come out and do a presentation or um, prepare some type of activity for your client or your group to take part in. One of the other things that might be of interest to you is our um, test drive blogs. And so I'll point out um, the one on the right there is our colleague, Corey, and he's hanging out in the background with us today. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll be able to see that I've posted a series of photos because Corey's rocked a different hairstyle for the last three times we've done a webinar. So he doesn't look like how he looks like in that picture now. His hair is quite different at this moment. And so um, these um, blogs are super helpful just to provide that added perspective. So for example, um, for this um, blog, we were able to chat with Corey about his first volunteer experience. Um, also looked at his educational background. So fun fact, Corey was in the master's program in political science at the University of Windsor. He did the internship stream and as a result, did some really awesome work with us as part of the internship and a position was able to open up here and Corey was able to be brought onto our team, which we are incredibly grateful for. Um, he is able to talk about what his master's internship looks like, um, shares his advice, and there he is with Michael Lett taking part in Manufacturing Day. Um, and then also gives advice, um, this one is specifically for high school students, but good advice in general. So there are a number of those blogs that are available and we continue to add to them. Uh, we have another blog, um, series that's part of this that's actually tracking a student. Um, so she was able to get connected to her experiential learning um, opportunity through our experiential learning hub, which is an opportunity for um, people to sign up for, um, let us know what type of experiential learning opportunity they're interested in. And then we try and connect them with the one that is best um, suited for them. And so we were certainly able to do that for Rand. So as you can see, she's at Hawkins and Co, which is really, a it seems like a really fun place to work. You can see there's an office dog there and that's kind of, I guess, in the top right of that picture, which is exciting. I got to go and interview her there. So we were able to talk with her before her placement. This blog features her during her placement and then we'll meet with her placement or we'll meet with her following her placement so that we have that full view of perhaps what she thought she would learn, what she actually did learn, what she's learned from all of that learning and how that will impact her career pathway. So something that might be uh, worth checking out. Um, hers is specific to co-op, but again, a lot of these help to give people an understanding as to what local workplaces look like and the types of skills that are, are important for those workplaces. One of the other projects that we have coming out in the very near future um, is our community labor market plan. We actually have printed copies at our office right now, but they will be launched officially in May. And this is a resource that will be incredibly helpful for you. It is, I, some of you may be familiar with um, our local labor market plan report updates. Very lengthful, lengthy title. Uh, we've released those in previous years. And um, so this is this year's version. So you can see um, there's the webpage for it. So at the official launch, we will have it posted on the website there. Um, it's something that we are very impressed with the graphic design of it and the way that the content has been organized. And it will really help you to give an overview as to what our labor market looks like. And we'll go into some deep detail for some of the data um, that relates to our local labor market information. All right, so we know that was a lot of information to cover. We're 52 minutes in. So Tesh Lynn's going to check on how we're doing with questions. So if you do have a question that we haven't answered yet, please feel free to ask that. And while she does that, I'll um, talk about a few concluding items. Uh, first of all, if you don't follow us on social media yet, um, please feel free to do so. Uh, you can find us on um, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, Twitter, I find particularly, is a really great way just to keep up with what's happening in an organization. And um, Sarah takes care of that on our team and she does a really great job. I think you'll be able to see our Twitter feed there off to the right-hand side. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at a different screen. Tashlin's bringing it up. There we go. <laughs> have a few different monitors going on here. So, oh, as you can see, there's those three images that I talked about. Um, there's a great picture of us getting ready for the webinar. So it's a really great opportunity to see what's happening um, 
in the organization, but then Sarah also posts a lot of great information that is helpful for clients who are looking for an employment opportunity. Uh, so that is something that we would encourage you to follow us on social media. Additionally, if you ever require a presentation or you'd like to discuss something further with us, uh, then please do feel free to get in contact with us. As we close, there will be a slide brought up that has our contact information if you don't have it already. So this webinar is going to be made available to all of you and to everyone in the community in general. So we will have a recording of it. You should receive that by email tomorrow, tomorrow, Saturday. But yes, it automatically goes out. Yeah, so you will receive that tomorrow. If you'd like to listen to that on that weekend, please feel free to do so. And we would love for you to share that with um, your colleagues or others who you think may find the information that has been shared through this beneficial. Again, we do have those handouts that are included as part of this webinar. So the inf all the links are available on through those handouts. All right, as far as upcoming events, we do have um, an event coming up in June, I believe, where we will be partnering with CEREC and we'll actually be taking some time to do an in-person session walking you through our website and um, how you can further use some of this information with your clients. And so that is something, um, stay tuned for, I guess, the registration details for that. And then additionally, um, we will have a survey that will pop up once you exit the webinar. We would really appreciate it if you could complete that survey. Um, as you may know, we do have a few webinars that are left throughout this month. It's been a, a month full of webinaring for us. I mean, so having the feedback from those surveys really helps us to know how we can work on improving things, uh, looking ahead to completing those final uh, webinars and then uh, looking ahead to doing webinars in the future. All right, so if there's no other questions, I suppose we'll finish up five minutes early. Uh, so thank you so much for taking part in today's session. As you can see, our contact information is on the screen. So if you need to follow up about anything, please don't hesitate to do so. All right, we hope you enjoy this sunny Friday and have a fantastic weekend. Bye everyone.